Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> so, what are we doing? Find the inverse function, find the range and domain. Okay, so f of x, we're here at the end of 7, 1, minus 3 cosine 7x. All right, and they want us to find the inverse function. How do we find the inverse function of a function? What do we do? What are, what are the steps for inverse function of any kind? Isn't it? Switch the sign. Switch, switch x and y, right? Yeah, switch x and y, solve for y. So go ahead and do that. Let's, this, this is the y, huh? f of x is y. So switch x and y. Boom and boom. Make this x. Make that y. So to find, to find an inverse function, step one, switch x and y. Step two, solve for y. So switch x and y, solve for y. Okay, now can you solve that little equation for y? Can you get y alone? Try to get y alone there. Okay, so get y alone. So uh, what, what's the first step to get y alone? Divide by... Yeah, divide by that negative 3. So we get x over negative 3. These cancel. Cosine 7y. Now, what's the next step? <clears throat> what do we do? We're trying, to, we're trying to get the y alone. All right? So what am I going to do there to get that y alone? Can I just divide by the cosine? Yeah. No. Three, that's not multiplication. Oh. But that's a very common mistake is calculus and honor for life. Watch it. That does not mean cosine times 7 y. It's cosine of 7 y. Like that's plugged into the toaster. Cosine's a machine like a toaster you function. You plug stuff in. So you can't just divide. That's not multiplied. So what do you do? Inverse cosine of both sides. And it cancels. The way you get rid of a function is you inverse on both sides. So I take the cosine inverse on both sides and it cancels out here. So that makes sense? It just gives you 7y cosine inverse of x over negative 3. Last step to get y alone, divide by 7. Does that make sense on that? That's what gets rid of a cosine or a sine or a tangent is cosine inverse. Can't divide. It's not multiplied. You've got to inverse function it on both sides. That cancels it out. So there's the inverse function like right there. Like natural log in E. Yeah, like natural log in E. They're, they're inverse functions. Exactly right. Same thing. All right, so now, so that's what they want for the inverse, and then they want the range and the domain. Oh, yeah, let me help you with that. So we got the inverse function. So there, there is the first answer. There's the inverse function. Next step. You changed the y to the. Next step, they're saying find the uh, range of f, the domain, and the range of f inverse. Okay, well, let's take the original function f first off. So the original, before, before we found the inverse, um, what is, they want the range of that. What's the range? Remember how we find ra range and, well, domain and range? If I was to graph it, I'm not going to graph the whole thing. But what would that minus 3? You guys are kind of good now at graphing sines and cosines? It means it's going to go down to negative 3 and up to positive 3, huh? Mm -hmm. Cosine starts down and, you know, whatever. It'll do its thing up and down, up and down. But it'll go from a depth of negative 3 to a height of positive 3, huh? That number in the front's the amplitude, how high and low it goes. You, you know that quite comfortably. So that means the range, remember the range is the up and down, the vertical span. The range is the vertical span. So the range is always um, bottom comma top. You always got to put the lower one first, bottom first, bottom comma top, so it's negative 3, positive 3. And what's the domain? So this is for f. So this is the range of f. And what's, what's the domain of f? Domain is left edge right. Remember, the thing just keeps going up and down forever, right? Negative infinity, positive infinity. Okay, so there's the domain of f and the range of f. And then remember how you turn that into domain and range of the inverse? They just switch, don't they? So this will become, this is the range 
of f inverse, and this is the, or this will be the domain of f inverse, won't it? Just switch them like that. That good? It's all from the picture. We know it's a cosine, a negative 3 cosine, so that means it's a cosine that goes up and down 3. So the range is up and down 3, domain is negative infinity, positive infinity, and then just switch them for the domain and range of the inverse functions. Bless you. Bless you. Good? All's well on that one? You'll okay on these steps to find the inverse again? So we, what do we do to find any inverse function? Then that'll certainly be on the final because we, you know, it was an earlier section. We get there'll be one question with find inverse. Switch x and y, solve for y. So I switched x and y, and then I solve for y. Okay, let's. Okay, so there's the function. F of x is six sine two x plus five. So that f of x, that's your y, huh? Okay, so they want you to find. And oh, by the way, don't worry about. Um, don't worry about all this. You don't, we don't have to do anything with that. I'll, I'll explain it later. Just, uh, just do the normal thing there. So switch x and y, find the inverse. Which means switch x and y, solve for y. Switch x and y, and then solve for y. Give you just a second on that, see if you can get that. First step. Divide by six. Divide by the six. Boom. So x over six is sine of two y plus five. And now, how do we get rid of that sign? Do we divide by it? No. You'll never be tricked by that again, right? No. Mm -hmm. So now, how do you, how do you get rid of the sign? Take sine inverse. Sine inverse, huh? Good, good. Yeah, sine inverse of the left side and sine inverse of the right side, and it cancels on the right. So we get sine inverse of x over 6 is 2y plus 5. And then we got a couple more steps. So we got to subtract that 5 and divide by the, divide by the 2. So I'll just, I'll just jump the 5 to the other side. So, so bring it up here. Sine inverse of x over 6 minus 5 is 2y, and then divide the whole thing by 2. There it is. There's the inverse function. It's kind of a complex thing. And can you put it in just like that without having to I think so. I think it'll be fine. Can you give it a, a sign? <laughs> yeah, sure. Those? Yeah, well, let's, here, let's go back. So we got, so we got the inverse function. Now let's uh, do the domain and the range things. Yeah, I just, um, I just start with the normal domain and range of the original. So, so this function... What's what's the what's f's domain, and what's f's, and then we'll do the inverse. We'll just switch them. So if you, if you drew, so just imagine a quick little picture of the thing. It's six times the sine, and you know sine and cosine just go up and down. So it'll just go up to six, down to negative six, huh? So the range is negative six comma positive six. The domain, negative infinity, positive infinity, and then you just switch them. So this is f inverse's domain, and this is f inverses range. And there we go. Good enough? Almost done with this section? <clears throat> Two here. So 3 times the cosine inverse of 4x is 2 pi. So <clears throat> I want to solve 4x there. So I would just start moving to get x alone. So what do you got to do to get x alone? Divide by that 3, yeah. So start by dividing by that 3. Cosine inverse of 4x is 2 pi over 3, like that. Okay, now what Now what are we? We're trying to get x alone, right? Still working to get x alone. Take the regular cosine of both sides, huh? Good. Yeah, everybody getting the hang of that? Nah. <laughs> nah. Is that making sense? So that's how you get rid of things, right? Sine or sine inverse, cosine, cosine inverse. You just do the opposite one and it cancels out. 
right, so you got 4x. 4x is the cosine of 2 pi. Now, what is the cosine of 2 pi over 3? Let's go to the unit circle. Zero. Maybe wait, wait. one half. Never mind. <laughs> I was thinking about uh, the other angle. So, negative one. so what it is, negative 1 half? Yeah. We'll get the unit circle just so we can all see. So cosine of 2 pi over 3 right here, cosine, sine, there it is, negative half, sure enough. So this side's negative a half. Last step to solve for x. Multiply, divide, or multiply. I'm going to go multiply by 1 fourth, just easier to, to do it that way. So x is minus 1 eighth. <coughs> that good? All that works? All right, so again, to get... To get down to an x that's buried inside of a cosine or cosine inverse or whatever, you just do the opposite function, don't you? Just gets rid of it. They're just drilling that, driving that home. All right. So we have 6 cosine inverse x minus 2 pi is 4 cosine inverse x. So for x, let me let you try that. should be a lot like the last one. Answer is? Uh, I don't think so. I could be messing up. Is it negative 1? Hmm? X. Is not X negative 1? So solve for X. I think the answer should be negative 1. Solve for X. Got to get X alone. What's, what's the first step? We got to get these two like terms combined, don't we? You with I me? To cost to oh no, no, you got to do that first, and then, yeah. then you'll get two cosine inverse x minus two pi is zero. That makes sense for that first step, because those are like terms, huh? See what I'm doing there? Cosine inverse x terms are both they're both like terms. And then um, keep going from there. Negative one, right? Mm -hmm. So add the two pi to both sides. It's two pi. Get up here. <coughs> two cosine inverse of x is two pi divided by two. Right. Cancel, yeah, then take the regular cos, huh? Exactly right. Take regular cosine of both sides, regular cosine of both sides. These cancel. So x is cosine of pi. Go to the unit circle. Pi cosine negative 1. Negative 1. Good on that? And that's...